The MV Wilhelm Guslov, a colossal ocean liner, casts a long and tragic shadow over maritime history. Initially conceived as a symbol of Nazi Germany's strength and prosperity, the ship was transformed into a vessel of desperation as the tide of war turned against the Third Reich. Packed with thousands of fleeing civilians and military personnel, the Guslov became a microcosm of the human suffering wrought by conflict. Its fateful encounter with a Soviet submarine in the icy waters of the Baltic Sea would etch its name into the annals of history as the site of the greatest maritime disaster the world has ever known. Here is the inside story. The Wilhelm Guslov was a colossal vessel constructed by the Blom & Voss Shipbuilding Company. The cement ship spanned approximately 209 meters in length and nearly 24 meters across, boasting a substantial gross register tonnage of over 25,000 units. It was officially launched on May 5, 1937. Originally destined to bear the name of Adolf Hitler, the ship's title was ultimately altered to honor Wilhelm Guslov prominent figure within the Swiss branch of the Nazi party, who lost his life at the hands of a Jewish medical student in 1936. This decision was made by Hitler himself, following a memorial service for Guslov, where he sat beside the grieving widow. After undergoing comprehensive sea trials within the North Sea on March 15 and 16, 1938, ownership of the ship was transferred to its designated operators. The Wilhelm Guslov stood as a pioneering cruise liner, specifically designed and built for the German Labor Front, a prominent organization in the country. Operated by its subsidiary, Strength Through Joy, the ship was envisioned as a vibrant hub for recreation and cultural enrichment, catering to German workers and officials. Its itinerary included a diverse array of offerings, from captivating concerts to leisurely cruises and extended holiday excursions. Moreover, the vessel served as a powerful public relations instrument aimed at cultivating a more favorable image of the Third Reich. Until the spring of 1939, the Wilhelm Guslov held the esteemed position of flagship within the KDF cruise fleet. The ship's inaugural voyage, though unofficial, occurred between March 24th and 27th, 1938. During this journey, it carried a contingent of Austrians with the intention of swaying public opinion in favor of Germany's annexation of Austria. Subsequently, on March 29th, the Wilhelm Guslov embarked on its second voyage, transporting workers and their families from the Blom & Voss shipyard on a three-day maritime excursion. The Wilhelm Guslov embarked on its third voyage from Hamburg on April 1, 1938, under the command of Captain Karl Lou. Accompanied by three sister ships, the vessel set a course for a group cruise through the North Sea. On April 3rd, a ferocious storm with winds exceeding 100 kilometers per hour scattered the fleet. Simultaneously, the Pegaway, a coal freighter en route from the Tyne to Hamburg, encountered the tempestuous conditions. The relentless storm damaged the freighter, rendering it difficult to maneuver and gradually taking on water by April 4th. At the break of dawn on April 4th, the Pegaway's captain issued a distress call while positioned approximately 20 nautical miles northwest off the Dutch coastline. The Wilhelm Guslov, the closest vessel, arrived at the stricken ship's location by 6 a.m. The first lifeboat, carrying a 12-person crew, was deployed but struggled against the towering waves. A second lifeboat, equipped with a motor for improved seaworthiness, was subsequently launched with a 10-person crew. The second lifeboat's crew initially assisted the first lifeboat's crew in returning to the Wilhelm Guslov before proceeding to the Pegaway. The entire 19-member crew of the Pegaway was safely transferred to the lifeboat and subsequently brought aboard the Wilhelm Guslov by 7.45 a.m. A Dutch tugboat arrived at the scene but was unable to save the Pegaway, which eventually capsized and sank. The first lifeboat, severely damaged by the relentless waves, drifted aimlessly after its crew was rescued, ultimately washing ashore on May 2nd. On April 8, 1938, under Captain Lube's command, MV Wilhelm Guslov departed Hamburg for England 
anchored approximately five and a half kilometers offshore from Tilbury to remain in international waters. The ship served as a polling station for German and Austrian citizens residing in England, allowing them to participate in the upcoming vote on Germany's unification with Austria. On April 10th, a total of 2,000 Germans and Austrians cast their votes, with an overwhelming majority in favor of the Union and only 10 dissenting votes. The Wilhelm Gusloff returned to Hamburg on April 12th. Following another voyage from April 14th to the 19th, the ship embarked on an Easter cruise before its official maiden voyage on April 21st to May 6th. Joined by its sister ships, the vessel set sail for the Madeira Islands. On the second day of the voyage, Captain Lube tragically passed away from a heart attack on the bridge at the age of 58. Frederick Peterson assumed command, completing the cruise and subsequently captaining the Wilhelm Gusloff on its final fateful journey. Between May 20th and June 2nd, 1939, the Wilhelm Gusloff, along with seven other ships, was tasked with transporting the Condor Legion back to Germany from Spain, following the victory of General Francisco Franco's nationalist forces in the Spanish Civil War. From March 1938 to August 1939, the Wilhelm Gusloff carried over 80,000 passengers on 60 voyages across Europe. For nearly a year and a half, from September 1939 to November 1940, the Wilhelm Gusloff was transformed into a floating medical facility, originally designated as Lazarette Schiff D. Its pristine white hull, adorned with a green stripe, was a stark contrast to its previous role. However, this medical purpose was short-lived. By November 20, 1940, the ship's healing mission ended as medical equipment was removed and its appearance altered to match the standard naval gray camouflage. The tightening grip of the Allied blockade on Germany's coastline necessitated a change in the ship's function. The once luxurious vessel became a barracks, housing approximately 1,000 trainees destined for submarine warfare. During this time, an ironic twist of fate unfolded. The port where the ship sat still served as a backdrop for a film depicting the Titanic disaster. Ironically, the ship used to represent the Titanic was another German vessel, the SS Cap Arcona. The trainees themselves played a part in the cinematic illusion, serving as extras in the production. Eventually, MV Wilhelm Gusloff was called back into active service. Its role shifted once more, this time as a carrier of civilians and military personnel as part of the desperate evacuation known as Operation Hannibal. Operation Hannibal was a massive naval undertaking designed to rescue German soldiers and civilians from the encroaching Red Army in East Prussia and the Baltic states. The MV Wilhelm Gusloff's final chapter coincided with this desperate exodus as it transported a diverse group of people, including civilians, military personnel, and skilled technicians from the regions of Courland, East Prussia, and West Prussia. Many of these individuals had been involved in advanced weapons development within the Baltic region. The seeds of Operation Hannibal were sown in late 1944, though its planning was shrouded in secrecy due to Hitler's opposition. Rear Admiral Konrad Engelhardt took the helm of the evacuation efforts, assembling a formidable fleet of 22 passenger liners, each surpassing 10,000 tons in size. Overall command of the operation rested in the hands of Admiral Oskar Cummins. By early 1945, two escort divisions, primarily composed of minesweepers, were deployed to the region to provide protection. The stage for the mass exodus was set on January 13, 1945, with the launch of the East Prussian Offensive by the Red Army's 3rd Belarusian Front under General Ivan Chernyakovsky. In tandem with Marshal Konstantin Rokossovsky's 2nd Belarusian Front, they encircled East Prussia between January 23rd and February 10th, 1945. In response to this dire situation, the German Grand Admiral entrusted General Admiral Oskar Kummitz and Rear Admiral Konrad Engelhardt with the planning and execution of the evacuation, codenamed Hannibal. 
on January 23, 1945, the Grand Admiral issued a directive to initiate the evacuation from the German-occupied port of Gottenhafen in Poland to safer harbors beyond Soviet control. A crucial corridor was established on February 19, 1945, linking Konigsberg to Pilar, providing a lifeline for thousands of refugees fleeing the advancing Red Army. This vital route allowed them to reach Pilar, where they awaited transportation to safety west of the Polish corridor. The influx of refugees from other regions further swelled the number of desperate people seeking escape. By April 8, 1945, the population of Pilar had surged to an estimated 450,000 refugees. The combined efforts of the military and civilian population transformed Operation Hannibal into one of history's largest sea evacuations, eclipsing even the Dunkirk evacuation of five years prior. Over a period of 15 weeks, a fleet of between 500 and 1,100 vessels, ranging from fishing boats to Germany's most powerful remaining warships, transported an astonishing number of people across the Baltic Sea. Estimates place the total number of evacuees between 800,000 and 900,000 civilians and 350,000 soldiers who found refuge in Germany and German-occupied Denmark. Official records indicate that 6,050 individuals were aboard the Wilhelm Guslaw, though the true number was undoubtedly higher due to unrecorded passengers. Extensive research conducted by a German archivist and survivor of the tragedy revealed a more accurate picture of the ship's human cargo. His investigations, spanning the 1980s and 1990s, determined that the vessel carried a diverse population of 10,500 people, including a naval personnel, wounded soldiers, and a vast array of civilians. This group encompassed a spectrum of individuals, from Gestapo agents and workers to high-ranking Nazi officials and their families. The ship was dangerously overcrowded, and the oppressive heat and humidity compelled many passengers to disregard orders and remove their life jackets. While the majority were ethnic Germans, the ship also sheltered individuals from Lithuania, Latvia, Poland, Estonia, and Croatia, some of whom had endured the harsh realities of Nazi occupation. The Wilhelm Guslaw departed Gottenhafen at 12.30 p.m. on January 30, 1945, accompanied by two torpedo boats and the passenger liner Hansa, which also carried refugees and military personnel. However, mechanical difficulties forced the Hansa and one torpedo boat to remain in port, leaving the Wilhelm Guslaw with a single escort, the torpedo boat Louve. The presence of four captains, the ship's captain, two merchant marine captains, and the captain of the embarked U-boat personnel led to divergent opinions regarding the safest course to avoid submarine attacks. Despite the advice of Lieutenant Commander Wilhelm Zahn, who advocated for a cautious route near the shore without navigation lights, Captain Frederick Peterson opted for a deeper path believed to be clear of mines. A puzzling radio message about an approaching German minesweeper convoy prompted Peterson to activate the ship's navigation lights to prevent a collision, inadvertently rendering the Wilhelm Guslaw highly visible in the darkness. Due to its armament and the presence of military personnel, the Wilhelm Guslaw did not carry the markings of a hospital ship and therefore lacked the protection afforded to such vessels under international law. The Soviet submarine S-13, captained by Alexander Marinesco, quickly located the MV Wilhelm Guslaw. The escorting torpedo boat's defensive capabilities were severely compromised due to a frozen sensor and inoperable anti-aircraft guns. Marinesco meticulously tracked the ships for two hours before executing a daring maneuver. He surfaced his submarine and circumnavigated the Wilhelm Guslaw's stern to position himself on the less expected port side. At approximately 9 p.m. local time, Marinesco unleashed a salvo of four torpedoes towards the port side of the Wilhelm Guslaw, striking the vessel approximately 30 kilometers offshore. Three of the four torpedoes inflicted devastating damage. The first breached the ship's bow 
sealing off compartments where off-duty crew members were resting. The second torpedo tore into the woman's quarters, located within the ship's drained swimming pool. The explosive force dislodged the pool tiles with lethal consequence, resulting in the tragic loss of life among the 373 women stationed there. Only three survived. The third torpedo directly impacted the engine room, halting all power and communication systems. The ship's life-saving equipment proved inadequate in the face of the catastrophe. Of the available lifeboats, only nine could be deployed due to the freezing of others within their davits. The ship's dramatic and rapid listing to port compounded the disaster, causing the lowered lifeboats on the starboard side to collide with the tilting hull, destroying many and spilling their occupants into the icy waters. The overwhelming majority of fatalities were attributed to drowning or exposure to the frigid Baltic Sea. The initial panic among passengers created a chaotic stampede on the stairs and decks, increasing the loss of life. The water temperature, already dangerously low at around 4 degrees Celsius, was further intensified by the unusually cold night, with air temperatures plummeting to between negative 10 and negative 18 degrees Celsius, and ice flows forming on the surface. Within 40 minutes of the torpedo attack, the Wilhelm Gustloff lay on its side. Ten minutes later, it vanished beneath the waves, sinking bow first to a depth of 44 meters. German rescue efforts managed to save over 1,200 people through the combined efforts of various vessels. Tragically, 13 survivors succumbed to their injuries. While all four captains aboard the Wilhelm Gustloff survived the ordeal, an official naval inquiry was initiated against Lieutenant Commander Zahn. However, the collapse of Nazi Germany in 1945 prevented a resolution to the investigation and left the extent of his responsibility unresolved. The sinking of the Wilhelm Gustloff stands as a grim record holder. 9,400 casualties, the most catastrophic maritime disaster in history, claiming more lives than any other vessel. While countless ships met their end during the tumultuous waters of World War II, the Wilhelm Gustloff's tragedy is unparalleled in scale. Approximately 1,000 German naval personnel perished when the ship was lost. Contrary to Soviet propaganda that falsely labeled the women aboard as SS concentration camp guards, these were in fact naval auxiliaries with a harrowing survival rate of an aforementioned 3 out of 373. The devastation did not end there, though. Just 11 days later, the same Soviet submarine that claimed the Wilhelm Gustloff sank another German ship, the General von Steuben, resulting in the loss of another 4,500 lives. The architect of these tragedies, Captain Alexander Marinesco, was a complex figure. His career was marked by personal struggles, including alcohol abuse and disciplinary actions. Despite his role in sinking the two German vessels, the Soviet government hesitated to elevate him to national hero status due to his troubled past. Instead of the coveted title of Hero of the Soviet Union, he received a lesser honor. His subsequent demotion and dishonorable discharge from the Navy in 1945 further underscored the issues of his legacy. A partial redemption came in the form of reinstatement and recognition in the years following the war. Ultimately, in 1990, he was posthumously awarded the highest honor bestowed upon Soviet citizens. Author Gunter Grass offered a nuanced perspective of the tragedy in his work Crab Walk. He aimed to detach the narrative from extremist viewpoints, asserting that while the sinking was undeniably horrific, it should be understood as a tragic consequence of war, rather than a war crime. The wreck of the Wilhelm Gustloff remains a haunting presence in the Baltic Sea. Designed as a war grave and off-limits to divers, the ship's final resting place is marked as Obstacle No. 73 on nautical charts. Despite its protected status, the site has attracted the attention of treasure hunters seeking the legendary Amber Room. The Amber Room, often dubbed the Eighth Wonder of the World, was a magnificent chamber adorned with amber panels, gold leaf, and mirrors. It was initially crafted in Prussia, and later found its home within the grandeur of Russia's Catherine Palace. However, its existence was cut short by the ravages of war. 
dismembered, and spirited away during World War II, its fate remains a mystery, fueling the dreams of treasure seekers and historians alike. Nevertheless, the sinking of the Wilhelm Gustloff remains a haunting chapter in maritime history. A symbol of both luxury and tragedy, the ship's journey from a pleasure cruiser to a wartime refugee vessel ended in catastrophe. The immense loss of life that unfolded in the icy waters of the Baltic Sea serves as a stark reminder of the human cost of war, a tragedy that continues to resonate long after the final echoes of battle have faded.